what sometimes I feel like I have to balance in my own teaching and what I've heard sometimes in hearing some of the young people that come uh, to audition with us is sometimes we can spend so much time going into the weeds on the improvisation part of being a musician. We're talking about melodic concepts or, you know, this harmonic or melodic idea or chords and scale relationships and all of the theory that sometimes we don't talk about the fundamental brass playing as much as we should be. Um, and, you know, I, the, the actual process of producing a sound on your instrument is the tool you use to express all that other stuff to the audience. So you can have the most in-depth harmonic and melodic concepts and the most sophisticated stuff going up on your brain. But if you don't have the chops to execute any of those ideas, you know, you're going to kind of be dead in the water. So I try and approach in my teaching, if we're playing, let's say we're learning like a bebop head or something like that, something that Dizzy would have played. Just like in a classical etude, you get to a point like, oh man, this interval is really kicking my butt or this fingering thing is not happening. So we'll stop and make an exercise out of whatever that challenge is. And you use the word gap before. I really like that word um, because I don't, one of the ways to grow the quickest is, identify, is to identify where the gaps are. And I don't like to call it a shortfall or a shortcoming or, you know, a weakness or any of those sort of things, because those have an inherent judgment, <laughs> value judgment attached to them. So we all have gaps, right? And identifying where the gaps are in your knowledge or your skill set or your awareness of what's going on around you is how you grow, you know, and, and addressing those gaps. So if I can use uh, whatever we're working on from an improvisational standpoint in a jazz trumpet lesson to address some brass playing gaps, I think that's my job and my responsibility to do that because that's what I try to do in my own playing. Because I have heard... Um, some students come in and just play beautiful uh, lines. Like their harmonic concept is really just super cool, but they can't play outside the staff or they're playing with a really thin sort of pinchy sound or they're playing a mouthpiece that's way too big and there's nothing but air in their sound. So, you know, the problem with that is then that's all you hear is the gaps in the brass playing. And you, I have trouble getting past that to listen to, you know, how amazing the melodic ideas might be. Uh, you know, I liken it to, I mean, that's your voice, like I said. So I could have the most brilliant information to lay on you, but if I talk like SpongeBob when I'm saying it, you probably don't want to hear it, you know, or it's going to at least affect your ability to process what I'm delivering. Um, so I, I think one of the things, one of the challenges that we have in, in jazz education is keeping that fundamental brass playing part of it um, particularly in the trumpet, like you said, keeping that as a real important part of, of every individual lesson is something I, I try really hard to do. And sometimes, you know, we just go so deep into a rabbit hole talking about like triad pairs or something like that, that we don't have time to talk about flexibility exercises. But that's one of the biggest challenges that I see in, in our educational world right now is that balance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kind of think about it like a, a Venn diagram, you know, so you've got the the technical aspect of playing you know the the, the brass mechanics mm -hmm. then you've got the the heady stuff the the theoretical understanding of of harmony and and rhythm and things like that and i think sometimes most a lot of players are happy to just be with those two like get, get your technique and and understand the theory but missing like that third component which is having something to say <laughs> You know, and I think that that because that's the stuff that comes with experience, mm -hmm. and um, you know, not not to not to sound like old and crotchety, even though I am both. Um, but I think that's why you know it's a difference between like I think any any artist if they go back and they listen to the earlier stuff, they usually are going like, eh, you know, yeah, maybe I had the chops, maybe I had the the thing, but I just didn't really have anything to say. You know, and it's it's that life experience that gives you, uh, you know, something of importance that you're trying to communicate with your music. And it, and I, I think that, that that when you reach that point where you've got something to say, you have the understanding, the vocabulary to say it with, to express that idea. That's your, your understanding of the harmony and, and the rhythms and stuff like that. And then you have the technical ability to execute that that's when the magic happens 
Yeah. So how do you do you think that that is a maybe something that's related to maturity? Because I've heard a bunch of young pe people that have amazing chops and they're going to show you that they have amazing chops. You know, and it's almost like I heard a joke one time. that said the, the definition of a gentleman is a man who knows how to play banjo, but chooses not to. So, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of my banjo friends don't like that one. But, but the whole point is like, OK, yeah, there's all these tools in the toolbox, but I don't have to use them all the time. Uh, or you might have uh, a, 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 an impressive vocabulary, but you don't need to always walk around using all these gigantic polysyllabic words just to show people how impressive your vocabulary is. Sometimes it's okay just to say, yeah, all right, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. You know, I, do you think maturity plays a, a part in that sort of restraint, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's maturity. And, you know, and, and maturity has nothing to do with age because, I mean, you know, I'm 60 and I, I'm probably the least mature person you'll ever meet, but you know, it, it's, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go watch Tom and Jerry after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, yeah. And I'm just kidding about that, but it's, it's, yeah, I do think life experience has something. Yeah. You know, and I, and I know some, some young cats that, that are, you know, they're old souls, Josh being one of them, you know, he's, you know, he, he is an old soul, you know, he, he, he has he has a a musical maturity that far surpasses his age, but I think a lot of that is also because of of the fact that you know when he was younger he was listening to a lot of old old school stuff yeah so he has that that mentality, but you know I especially like in the jazz world uh, yeah because yes that's more what I'm you know jazz and pop are, are my areas the classical I'm I'm a fish out of water, uh, but. I think because of the expressive nature of jazz, um, you know, life experience has so much to do with it, you know, jazz and blues, uh, where it's, you know, you're taking the, the, the joy, the, the, the pain, the loss, the gain, you're taking all of those things and, and you're expressing it in real time, as opposed to like through a composition where you have time to, to think about it and, and make it, you know, what you want it to be. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're real time trying to express yourself uh, in a way that touches the audience, that only comes through experience. You know, how, how can you, how can you make someone understand longing or pain if you haven't experienced it yourself? You know? So I think that, that, uh, you know, when, when you reach that magic point where you've got the life experience the you know the technique and the the concepts i mean and, and that's kind of like you know hip-hop to me uh you know love it or hate it uh you know when you listen to the lyrics of someone you know not not just you know sp you know, spouting off the 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 latest crap uh, but, you know, someone who has actually lived, you know, come through some hard times and experienced some stuff, when you hear them talk about it, you can go, okay, that touched you because, you know, it came from a place of being genuine, not just talking about, you know, the bling or the, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's just, you know, when you're hearing those real world experiences come out in the music, it has a different effect on you as a listener than, than just someone doing something like that, you know. Out, pulling something out of the, you know, whatever. Uh, so like as a musician, you know, as, as a trumpet player, it, can you, can you identify how that maybe has happened to you? How, how your, your experiences have, have influenced your, your improvisation, your compositions? Well, I definitely hope I've gotten more mature uh, over the years in terms of um, knowing when to restrain myself. You know, not every solo needs to show people how great your high chops are or how fast you can play or something like that. So I hope I've gotten more judicious <laughs> uh, in the way I approach uh, playing music. And uh, as far as composition, I think one influences the other, you know? So, and again, like in you're writing a chart or writing an arrangement, not everything has to bash the listener over the head with how smart you think you are. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's an element of restraint there too. And it's, I, again, using the language analogy, you know, I forgot what the number is, but like the average American knows like 20,000 English words or something like that, whatever the number is. And never do we use all 20,000 of them in a single day. I mean, we use a fraction of that. Um, 
So sometimes, you know, saying, you know, Miles Davis saying, saying less is actually saying more sometimes with that sort of stuff or by, you know, hitting somebody with something and then backing off and letting it sink in. A lot of times the silence is more profound than, the, you know, whatever you just, however sophisticated you feel what you just played was, this is maybe the silence was the more sophisticated part of it. So, yeah. um, I think there is an element to, to growth maturity about that, like you said, that only comes with time.